you recruit, the players come to you. How how do you kind of, are there certain players you're recruiting? We're really selective in who we allow in. Rankings don't matter. Is there any advice you would give to parents of, of basketball players specifically? I mean, do they impact their kids recruiting? They'll say Kansas is coming to Waco and it's a night game on ESPN. Take us through your day. What time do you wake up? Kind of what does that all entail? I know there's a ton of preparation, but could you share that with our listeners? Most memorable game you've coached. Sports teaches so many great life lessons and uh, uh, selflessness, hard work, being a part of something bigger than yourself. Hey guys, Jeff with Britt and Brad, and uh, we are going to have a lot of fun uh, coming up this year, but let's get a little start. Let's talk about everything. School's back in session, right? Yeah, well, my boys are the only ones in school here, <laughs> and college hasn't started yet, so yeah. not, not at my house. My for kids, you. My kids are a week away. I got I got one going back to college, or going to college for the first time in three weeks, and then my, my two youngest are starting school next week, so... One more week of summer left. Guys, we also have the Olympics going on, uh, which has been a blast to watch. Yeah, by the time this airs, it may be over. But, uh, but man, the swimming, we talked about it before. Swimming was fabulous. But you know what makes it even better is Rowdy Gaines. Yeah. I yeah. mean, Rowdy Gaines is – He's the best announcer at the Olympics. Yep. He brings so much excitement. And if you haven't heard, we had Rowdy on our, yep. our show in the first season, and he was fantastic. So if you haven't heard that in his story, you definitely want to go back and I mean, listen to he's that. He's a genuine guy. I mean, he's such a humble – for all he's accomplished on in the as a swimmer, but also as an announcer, he, he's just a good guy. And he didn't start swimming competitively till he was 17. Which was awesome because yep. he couldn't make any other team, which was, <laughs> which was great. But you know what I loved watching? is how he would break down like in relays and stuff like that you know usa's got to be here at this point to have a chance to medal here and, i mean dude most of the time he was right on too it was it was impressive yeah it's a shame that that we don't get that again for four I, more I years know. yeah i know yeah. but we got college football coming up we do we do i cannot wait obviously mm. it's been a quiet year for my clemson tigers Dabo sweeney who kicked us off season two last year uh it's been quiet there, which I told you, I kind of like it. I'm kind of thinking they're going to come out a little different this year. We're going to find out because they're playing Georgia opening week. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Yep. So what uh, what's coming up, Jeff? You know what, guys? I'm excited to officially welcome you to our season three. Um, we have so many great guests uh, lined up over the next you know few months and, and continuing to go on. We're going to do some live shows along the way. Uh, but I think it's cool that we get an opportunity uh, to talk to uh, our first one to be Baylor head coach, Scott Drew, who national championship coach, but I think more than anything is just a man of faith and character and the way he runs his po program, I think is, is it might be the best in the country. Yeah. I, you said it all. He's done so much on the court with that team. But what's most impressive is is the respect that he commands uh, just in the way he carries himself and what he stresses. And I can't wait to talk to him about it. Yeah, it's going to be great. Enjoy it. Before we get to the podcast, if you have middle school or high school kids that play sports and you don't want to fundraise like me, we got you covered. My buddy Chris Carneal owns Booster. Chris? We help schools and sports teams raise funds in a super fun and engaging way. In fact, the last 22 years, we've raised $750 million, and we can't wait to help you. Choose Booster.com. Well, welcome to the show, Coach Scott Drew, and thank you for joining us today. Well, thank you very much for having me. Excited to be on with you guys. Man, you know, we're going to get into a lot of stuff, and there's so many different kind of roads we can go down, but I know you grew up in a small town in Indiana. Your dad was a basketball coach, but I know you weren't exactly had the greatest size growing up, and, and tennis was kind of your thing, but I want you to walk us through a little bit of that and, and kind of, you know, what sports you played uh, growing up in Indiana. 
So growing up, uh, like everybody, uh, uh, baseball, football, basketball, uh, tennis, our dad wanted us to try everything, him and my mom, so karate, piano. Um, I mean, I think we did everything. Uh, as far as I did have my first uh, no-hitter when I was 11. Um, so nice. uh, it, that, that was good. But uh, I got height challenged. Uh, I was five one and a half my sophomore year. So the fastball would die before it got to home plate. Um, <laughs> quarterback, I couldn't see over the line. Um, and, 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 and as a point guard, I couldn't get out of a trap. So anyway, uh, uh, the great thing is uh, uh, tennis was one sport that uh, didn't really require as much height. Uh, but uh, in a basketball family, uh, we had a basketball court in our backyard, and uh, me and my brother, sister, we played all the time. And uh, one thing my dad uh, really allowed uh, us to do was um, not only always have summer camps with with his team all summer long, uh, but he allowed me to coach my brother and sister's team. And um, with 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 doing the coaching part, the recruiting part, uh, the development part, that was really uh, uh, what uh, God blessed me with the desire to do. And I love to help people. And uh, as that continued to grow and, and it became obvious to me, he wanted me to coach. Uh, my dad wasn't so certain. He thought I need to go to law school, um, but that was too much reading for me. So uh, uh, anyway, I was blessed to have an opportunity to coach with him. And then uh, my brother played for us. And from there, uh, we went to a Sweet 16 at Valparaiso University. And uh, I worked with my dad, and we won six out of seven championships. And uh, then Baylor, I took over there. Then Baylor position was open, prayed about it, felt led to come here, been here ever since. Anyway, I'll let you ask another question. <laughs> well, Coach, I, I uh, going back again to growing up and – at what age, when you, you talked about your, your challenges of being being short, did you did your goals transfer from like, hey, I want to I want to play at college to where you talked about, hey, you you got the itch to coach? Was that a tough transition? Was it kind of something that God kind of gave you a reality check of, hey, this is not going to be my path, and I need to choose another path, or kind of take us through that a little bit? I think when God always shuts one door, He always opens another. And I remember uh, actually, my parents took me to a ho- the a hospital. I spent a night and. Two nights they were doing tests to see why I wasn't growing. And uh, <laughs> um, uh, again, I think if, if I'd have been normal size, I'd have probably been a, a, a Division three in AIA basketball player. And then I would have never had a chance to go to Butler. I'd have never had a chance to learn under Barry Collier and Thad Mata. Um, Barry coached at Butler and really got the program going. And then went to Nebraska and Thad Mata coached at Butler, went to Ohio State, went to Xavier, um, and now is at Butler, had a great career. Um, Jay John uh, became the head coach at uh, Oregon State. So I was really able to learn from some really successful coaches and bring some ideas back to my dad. And again, that's where um, God always uh, uh, has a better plan. Sometimes we get mad that it's not our plan, but uh, we're not God. And uh, he knows the ending so uh uh he, he knows better than us for sure because uh, one thing i love when i heard this pastor say you look at your finger and there's eight billion people on this on this planet but you're the only one with that fingerprint and he knows us better than anyone obviously coach you you've taken all of that and you know you've done so much with your career and and you're known for you know being a great leader and we, we read in your book, and we'll talk about your book here in a little bit, but, uh, but you won a leadership award in eighth grade. And so, and I think that came from your peers. And can you talk a little bit about where, you know, where your leadership skills were developed? Were they innate or did you learn it from your parents? Or can you just talk a little bit about that? Well, I, I was blessed to uh, have great parents. Um, both were educators. My dad has a doctoral degree. My mom was a, a teacher. And uh, I think the uh, uh, first thing is it's hard to lead unless you're taking care of your own business. And uh, uh, always got good grades. Um, not saying I was perfect. We know we all sin and we're all saved through faith and grace. Uh, and and with that, um, I think uh, uh, following my dad and mom, my dad's always been uh, a great leader. Uh, and uh, I think he's a better father than a coach. Uh, but if you, if you have a great dad, you try to emulate him and you try to be like him in a lot of areas. And uh, one thing he did that uh, I didn't really understand at the time, um, 
when I was one, he coached at Washington State, assistant coach. When he was, when I was two to six, he coached at LSU with Dale Brown. And uh, I think the last night he was gone, like 157 nights, he had hotel receipts for. And my mom tells a story. He came in one night. We we have three kids now, and we thought he was a burglar. <laughs> and so he he went to a, a, a small Christian school uh, from there, and that was really a huge sacrifice. Um, because he was on the fast track to be a head coach, and yet he chose to to go a different path so he could spend time with us. And uh, his gym was our playground, and uh, we spent uh, uh, a lot of time playing every sport with him. And from that, uh, able to learn a lot from him because of the time that he gave us. You know, in youth sports, so many so many athletes and people that make it obviously have a brother, or sister, or someone. What was y'all's relate you and your brother's relationship like growing up, and and did you kind of push each other? Did you have some fun with it? I think really the day I quit playing basketball was when he beat me. So uh, <laughs> and that, <laughs> took, that took a long time because you know you're always you're always older, bigger, stronger, yep. and you're calling fouls because you're the oldest. So <laughs> you ran the court, yeah. But but uh, uh, I also uh, joke because he always played with my friends. And I was four years older, so he's always playing with guys older than him. Um, but I, I joked that uh, you knew he was a good player because I would pick him on my team. <laughs> yes. uh, coach, when you, you said your dad wanted you to go to law school, but obviously you wanted to coach. And how hard was it for you to, to get him to hire you at Valparaiso? Like, was that a tough interview process? Yeah, well, 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 first, first and foremost, like our family, everybody's either a lawyer or a coach. So the ones that can't read were coaches. Everyone <laughs> else is lawyers. But uh, um, with with uh, uh, my dad, the only thing I wish if I'd have known I wasn't going to be a lawyer, I probably wouldn't have gotten su- such good grades. You know, <laughs> I didn't I didn't need him to coach really. But uh, uh, in all seriousness, um, after it was my uh, junior senior year, and 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 I told my dad that uh, I wanted to coach and uh, I think this is where God's leading me. And my dad's like, that's great. Once you get this law degree, um, we're going to get you in coaching. <laughs> and and I said, no, I think now, and like everybody else, you fill out all the uh, um, uh, job applications. You send letters to every head coach. And uh, we joke about ding letters. But um, in life, we know uh, it's not always what you know, it's who you know. And uh, I, I knew my dad pretty well. He gave me an opportunity and that gets you in the door. And then it's up to you uh, to make sure you stay there. And I remember the first year made $600 a year, um, couldn't live anywhere because couldn't afford anywhere except home. And all I did was work 24-7. And I remember uh, we... Back in the day, staffs were smaller, understaffed. And I remember the first time I met with our staff, I said, anything that you guys want, give that you don't want to do, give to me. Because I know right now, if we don't have good players, we're not going to win. And we, we, need, we need better players. And so I tried to do everything that, that allowed our two assistants to recruit at the time. And then when I got my work done, then I would recruit. Um, but uh, literally my, my day was pretty, pretty boring. It was stay at the office until I, I had to come home and go to bed. Well, you've, you've turned that into a extremely accomplished career, but we want to unpack some of that. You know, we have an audience of, of young athletes and parents and coaches, youth sports coaches, and, uh, and we just think you have so much that you can say to all three of those groups today. And, and so just to kind of start off a little bit on coaching, can you kind of tell us how you, how you de- develop your coaching philosophy and maybe sum up what, what that is for us? Yeah. I, I you know, uh, um, uh, I had one mentor and that was my dad. I learned from him and he's the only one I learned from. And so often you hear where well, you got to learn from several coaches or go to several programs. Well, if you, if you learn uh, from somebody that does it really well and right, why do you need to learn from two or three people? And uh, uh, Dale Brown was my other mentor because my dad worked for him and uh, I could really talk to him about things at the power five level, the media and different scrutinies. Um, but with that, I, I, what my dad did, I, I copied, emulated. And then obviously you go to clinics, you talk to coaches. Um, you can only learn if you ask questions, if you're talking, you're not learning. So, uh, the more I could ask, the more I could, uh, learn from, and you, you can learn from anybody. So, 
just try to get people talking and, and, and learn from as many people as possible. Be a sponge and take in the best practices and uh, never, never stop learning. You know, one thing I love about you, Coach, obviously your program is you're just you're high on character. And it's one of our pillars that we have for pure athletes. So, you know, what do you preach to your kids, your players, on why it's so important to uh, obviously have great character in great moments and in bad moments? Great question. Uh, uh, I remember one of our players that was just drafted this summer. Uh, he had a bad game in summer league, and the head coach uh, – uh, called his uh, uh, agent, um, and right at that time he said, Ac actually, my bad, he called our assistant coach that knew him because he used to coach in the league, and he said, uh, uh, Jacoby's going to, and that's his name, Jacoby Walter, Jacoby's going to have a great career. And he said because he had a bad game and how he handled it and approached it, the character he showed, He's going to be really successful. And you learn about people in their highs. Do they have humility? And you learn about them in their lows. Um, and what's their foundation? What are they built on? Uh, you find out about when you squeeze an orange juice, what comes out? That's And until you're squeezed, you don't always know. Uh, but with us, we call it preparing champions for life. It's a spiritual, it's academic, it's character formation, and it's athletic. And at the end of the day, um, the most important thing is you can't uh, you can't buy your way into heaven. You can't win your way to heaven. I, I, if I die today, I'm not going up there and saying, God, we won a national championship. Yep. Or, or God, how much does it cost to get into heaven? Um, we're all a son of a king. He sent his son to die for us through Jesus. That's how we get to heaven. So uh, uh, he did the work. And uh, so often uh, we try to take credit for what we do. Um, and uh, uh, that that's not the case. Otherwise, he wouldn't have had to send his, send his son to die for us. Coach, you... Um that was great, by the way. Yeah. Um, you had you were you'd been a head coach for one year <clears throat> of Alpo, and then the Baylor job came available. And I mean, everybody knows the story, but I don't, I don't know if everybody knows the story. How how bad a situation that was? What you know? What prompted you to sit there and say, I you know what what where did you find the confidence? Where did you find the the uh, foresight? I know you probably prayed a lot about it, but to take over that program in the state that it was in, and, and did you foresee all the success you're going to have? You know, like I mean, how, how could you how could you take that program to where? How could you see it being where it is now, success wise? So with with my dad, he when he when he was at Valpo before I got there, they played in the Dr Pepper Classic at at Baylor, and they'd played in a lot of different tournaments. And he always talked about the great hospitality and the kindness of the people. And uh, Jim Turner was their host, and uh, he's built a lot of buildings here, and a um, uh, great player at uh, 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 Baylor. Uh, basketball had a game of 62 or 63 points um, back in the day, was the CEO of Dr. Pepper, still involved with the program. But anyway, that relationship – that hospitality, I just, he would always say the best, best place, best tournament, Baylor University, Waco, Texas. Um, Falpo is the largest Lutheran school in the nation. Notre Dame's largest Catholic. Baylor's the largest Baptist. Denominations, um, uh, uh, sometimes uh, uh, where people go to church means too much at the end of the day. Uh, being able to pray with people, being able to worship with people. Um, uh I don't think Jesus cares if you're Catholic, Baptist, Lutheran, Evangelical. Um, so with that, being at a, a, a Baptist school, though, uh, really gives you an opportunity to share your faith. Um, so many great ministries on our campus, uh, over 20, so many great churches in our city. And uh, uh, when it came open, we had the blueprint because at Valparaiso University uh, was right next to Notre Dame. And Digger Phelps had said, Homer, don't go there. And that's my dad's name, Coach Drew, Homer <laughs> Drew. Don't go there. No one's ever won there. It's a graveyard job. You can't win there. Yeah. They don't have the resources, whatnot. My dad went there um, and developed it into uh, uh, really the, the Gonzaga before the Gonzaga. Um, and with that, 
at Baylor, it's the same thing. Uh, hadn't had a ton of basketball success, um, but great academics, great school, cared about athletics, and uh, uh, so much upside, so much room to grow. And at the end of the day, uh, if God says go, well, it, <laughs> who are we going to follow, right? So, um, and and I felt led to come here, and I've I've always had on my heart to to be at a conference in a place where you could compete for Final Fours and national championships year in and year out, and God put that on my heart, and uh, obviously in the Big Twelve being the best basketball league for the last uh, uh, over the last ten years, um, analytically by far and away been the best league as far as uh, getting teams to the tournament. Um, no better place to go than Baylor. You know, Coach, I got, I got a question. We, we've had Jay Billis, Jamal Crawford, different basketball guys on the show, and they all talk about the landscape of AU today and how it's me, 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 try to showcase yourself. So you recruit, the players come to you. How, how do you kind of – are there certain players you're recruiting for parents that are on here that – whether it's character, whether it's kind of being unselfish. And then when they get there, do you try to mold them into a culture that, that you believe in? Yeah, great, great question. So with us, obviously, they have to have talent. Otherwise, you're yeah. not recruiting them. <laughs> they can't look like these two guys? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> you're good, by the way. You're good. But with, the, with, with, with that, after the talent, I mean, that's when the character, the heart comes in. Um I'm, this is, this is year 23 here and, uh, uh, life's too short to be around people you don't want to be around. So we're going to coach people that we want to be around that we think we can help. We think will represent our university, um, the way that it, it, it wants to be represented. And with that, uh, if they have the character, uh, the work ethic, um, uh, spiritually, um, just open to grow in Christ and, uh, um, academically, uh, usually, usually if you're competitive, you want to be good in everything. And, uh, we're looking for competitive people that, that fit our, our character and, uh, work ethic and what we do here at Baylor. So, um, it's, a, it's a great place because academically, uh, we're an R1 research institute and, uh, that's the highest of highs. Uh, Baylor's an expensive school, cost about 70,000 to attend. And athletically, God's really blessed us since 2011, the most wins in football, men's and women's basketball. In the last five years, we've been the winningest Power Five program in the country. The only school in the last four years to be a top three seed in the NCAA tournament. And the only school to have four straight top 20 picks. And that's not because of me. It's because I surround myself with people smarter and better than me that I learn from. Uh, it's a great administration. It's a great fan base. And at the end of the day, the players are the ones that do the work. So, Coach, carrying that on a little bit, hey, I mean, so you're you're looking at character and heart and in addition to talent as you bring people in. But still, these are 18 year old kids. So I, I'm curious, what, what would your message be to other coaches out there? How do you how do you create, you know, once they're on campus, how do you continue to develop culture and how do you pour into kids you know, both athletically and as people, what, what are the kind of things specifically that you do to, to, to unlock that potential in those, in those kids for such a long period of time you've done it? Well, that's, what's so great in division one, there's 363 schools. So there's a lot of coaches that are better for certain type players than me. And there's, there's programs that are much better for certain type players than, than, than Baylor's. Um, so it's, it's really getting to a fit and getting to a place that, um, you can become the best that, uh, God's called you to be. And with us, uh, it, it's always a Christ centered program. Um, everything we do starts from the heart. And, uh, I mean, we'll pray before practice. Uh, we'll end with a uh, uh, prayer after practice. We got a no cussing policy where you run lines or do push ups. That's players or coaches. Um, now we get after it. We compete and we try to work harder than anybody in the country. Um, but at the same time, uh, we do it with listening to music and uh, uh, some of it's gospel music. And uh, it, it's done in a way that, uh, again, it's not for everybody, um, but 
uh, for those that are looking to go to a school and grow spiritually, academically, and improve their character. People leave Baylor. I've never heard an NBA GM say um, doesn't have the character we need. Uh, normally, they, they players come from this program and um, they that 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 box is checked, and that's because it's a player led program. The upperclassmen uh, they know what we want, and how we want things done, and iron sharpens iron. Um, uh, there's three of you sitting there. If two of you are doing the wrong thing, then probably the third is going to do the wrong thing. If two of you are doing the right thing, probably the third's going to do the right thing. So, um, we're really selective in who we allow in rankings don't matter. Um, there's been number one players in the nation. We haven't brought to visit, not that, that, that they're bad kids, but just don't fit our program. And so we're not going to sacrifice our program for for somebody that's talented. It's it's a it's a business venture. Good business, both should benefit, and people need to get to a place that's best for them. And uh, uh, the place they're going needs to obviously benefit. And so uh, we're like the Marines. We're looking for a few good men. <laughs> man, I love rankings. Don't matter. I'm so glad you said that. I, I made my day. Coach, what do you say though to like we you know ninety five percent of the kids who are listening to our show, you know, are not four star and five stars. But what do you say to that kid that still dreams of playing at a Baylor, playing at a a D one? Kind of how do you how do you give them inspiration? How do you give them hope that that journey you know is still there for them? Well, it, not everybody's going to be in the NBA. Um, not everyone's going to be at a, a, a high major school. Not everybody's going to be a, a college basketball player. Um, but if God gave you a passion and a desire, uh, then then it's up to you to uh, reach the fullest potential you can. And uh, the great thing is that the players that we try to recruit are guys that are really passionate about basketball because otherwise it becomes a job. And if it's something that you don't love, then there, God created you to do something else. But if it's something that you love, um, you might be at the high end, somebody that plays overseas or someone that plays in the G League or somebody that uh, never plays professionally, um, but gets a great degree, has a great impact and is successful in life after it. Um, Whatever talents and abilities God's given you, uh, he just asks you to max them out. And that's what we try to do. You know, before Britt kind of gets into your book a little bit and asks you a few questions, I want to ask just five rapid fire questions for you uh, that our listeners love. So I'll give you quick answers. Okay. Most memorable game you've coached? Oh, you got national championship. You got 1998 uh, Sweet 16 with my brother. You got NIT championship. All right. That's, that's fair enough. Toughest environment to play in as a coach? Um. In the Big 12 for us, it's been, it's been Kansas over the years. Uh, toughest player you've ever coached against? Whew. Kevin Durant, Blake Griffin, Trey Young, Michael Beasley. We've had some monsters in the 12. Uh, your favorite sport event to watch outside of basketball? College football. Love college football. Oh, okay, we were just talking about it on here. I can't wait. And, and my final one, who's the athlete you grew up looking towards? Uh, Michael Jordan, that was easy. <laughs> That's perfect. Well, Coach, Jeff mentioned your book, and uh, you, you've got a book called The Road to Joy, uh, Leading with Faith, Playing with Purpose, Leaving a Legacy. And and we're trying to talk about some of those things with you today, but I, I just want to recommend we, we've got the book, have been through it. It's a great read. And, you know, we only have you for about 40, 45 minutes today, so there's only so much we can cover. But for our audience – you know, if you want to hear more about Coach's story growing up uh, and really unpack some of that, if you want to hear more about his philosophies as a coach, we highly recommend this book. It's, it's really a great book. Well, I appreciate you saying that. One thing I can tell you, if, if, if I wrote it, it's going to be a real easy read because I don't use a lot of big words. <laughs> have, have you, uh, is it something you'd wanted to do or did someone push you to do it, kind of? That's another great question. So my dad always wanted to write a book and it was always keep notes. We go to this uh, sweet 16, he writes a book and they're all still in his basement. So if you want a copy, I can get you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> find a way. But uh, uh, um, so from that, he always told me when, when we came down here and started being successful, hey, keep notes, 
you need to write a book, need to write a book. I never wanted to write a book. The reason the book was written was just to share what God's done through our program, because um, really that's that's why we achieved what we did. And that's why the book was written. Uh, Two really specific questions. One, and I think they're kind of related. One, what's your what's your favorite part of coaching? And, and then number two, how, how do you, in this world that you're in, which is big time basketball, how do you, how do you keep balance in life? Wow. Two good questions. The fir- first one, uh, when you see you, you coach because you want to see people reach their goals and dreams. So obviously when they're working really hard and they're able to achieve the highest level, and that's like team goals, that's players uh, reaching professional goals. Uh, that's a big, like it encompasses a lot, but that's, that's why you coach. You'll love that. Um, the other reason for me is, is it's a ministry and spiritually when players, uh, grow in their faith and that might be some accepting Christ. It might be some getting baptized. It might be some that just, uh, uh, are stronger when, when they leave than when they, when they came in, uh, and then continuing those spiritual conversations, um, 10, 15 years after graduation. And uh, um, that, that to me, last year we had three players baptized, three accept Christ. That's, that's, that's awesome. Coach, we, when we have athletes on here, we always like to ask them kind of what their game day routine is. What is it? Take us through the day like when, let's say, Kansas is coming to Waco and it's a night game on ESPN. Take us through your day. What time do you wake up? Kind of what does that all entail? I know there's a ton of preparation, but could you share that with our listeners? So, so, uh, uh, to finish up the, the, the last part, we also, our program's really grown because we have nine coaches. You have a strength coach, nutritionist, you have a trainer, you have, uh, uh, 14 managers and GA. So you got a lot of opportunities to witness and, uh, 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 help people grow spiritually. Second thing, as you said, uh, on that last question was balance. And, uh, um, that's a lot longer answer and something that I've tried to get better at each and every year. Um, but that's really, really hard because when you're doing something you love, you tend to spend more time in it and you have to have a great wife period. And I've really blessed to have a great wife and great, uh, uh, kids. And I've tried to involve them more and more as I've gotten older, as far as game day routine. Um, I talked to coach K, uh, a couple years ago and I said what really changed for you and he said delegation and when he had that back injury and he really started to delegate more uh, life became easier for him because the game has gotten a lot uh, more analytical um, uh, uh, everything that you used to do I, I I have a little note card and the little card I look at from 20 years ago maybe I I, I had one fifteenth of what I have on a card now. So it, 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 the game is just so much more complex and, and schemes are, 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 are so much more advanced. You have analytics to back up what you do, why you do and with who you do it. So I say all that to say, um, a game day, I, I, I write the card the night before. Um, and that's kind of my review for the test get up in the morning and we have shoot around. And, uh, um, uh, after that we'll, with, with the players, uh, we're watching film with them and then I'll go home, take a, a, a power nap for 10 or 15 minutes. Um, before I do that, I read the proverb of whatever game we're on. So if it's game five, proverb five, um, and then, after that, uh, uh, a lot of prayer throughout the day and turn uh, leading up to the game. And then uh, uh, afterwards, hopefully you're so excited with a big win, you can't sleep because the only other alternative is you're so upset with a tough loss, you can't sleep. So the night after a game is really hard. The night before a game, you're good. <laughs> yeah, I imagine, you know. So we've talked about, you know, Scott Drew, the coach. So let's talk for a second to a lot of parents that are watching this as a dad. What were you like with your kids watching them play? I try to I try to be the parent that I want our players, <laughs> parents to be. And uh, uh, I think uh, uh, David Pollack had a podcast and, and I love what he said with his kids is after each time they got done, um, did you have fun and did you play as hard as you could? 
And really, I, I remember uh, one of my sons uh, had three uh, minor league coaches coaching his team. I think he was four or five at the time. And one of them got done after the year. He's like, I, I'm never coaching again. I said, what do you mean? He goes, parents are really hard. And I'm like, how qualified to have three pros coaching like five-year-old or four-year-old or six-year-old, whatever it was. And I'm like, wow. Um, but uh, I, really, uh, I want them to, uh, um, if they like it, I want them to, to play as hard as they can and I want them to have fun. And at the end of the day, uh, I'm not the parent that's uh, uh, um, overly involved in, in all over the officials um, and things like that. Uh, and I, and I never, never go against what the coach says. <laughs> Speaking of that, you know, I, you see, you know, everybody you recruit has got parents and, you know, you see a whole lot of stuff. We often say, you know, youth sports would be great if not, if not for the parents, is there any advice you would give to parents of, of basketball players specifically? I mean, do they impact their kids recruiting uh, opportunities? Do coaches see things in parents that cause them to go, Oh, I don't know about, uh, about this family. And that, 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 that's another great, great question. And we call it their inner circle and who to, who, do the, who does the player listen to? Because at the end of the day, if the inner circle is divided or if there's chaos, then he's probably going to have that same chaos with you. So absolutely, we look at uh, uh, parents, we look at the coaches they work with or who's going to, when they get to our school, who's going to have a voice in their life. And if everyone's on the same page and we've been, we've been blessed to have so many great parents and do you want them involved? Do you want them to love their kids? Absolutely. Um, but at the same time, I think, uh, um, sometimes all parents can look at other parents and say, I don't like what them doing this, 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 this. So then, then you got to look at yourself. Am I doing this, 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 you know, cause at the end of the day, you're right. Um, uh, sports teaches so many great life lessons and uh, uh, selflessness, hard work, being a part of something bigger than yourself. Um, and that can get that can get out of whack if it becomes about me, myself and I and what it being about you. Um, that's why you're playing on a team. And uh, that's why anytime one of our players get an award, we call it a team award because the, the player of the year is not going to the last place team. And usually the first team, all, all league people aren't getting it from the last team. And that's why I love the coaches in the Big 12. We don't reward usually players that, that don't win on, on, on teams. Coach, you read about uh, Nick Saban uh, not really enjoying the championships and, and kind of like starting to work on the next season on the plane ride home. When you won the national championship in 2021, honestly – how much time were you able just to kind of savor that or, or how soon did you have to get back into the preparing for the next year? I don't think you're a successful coach if you don't constantly plan ahead. And I mean, literally the, the, the minute the game's over you, you, your last game, you're thinking, all right, who's going pro who's coming back. Who's transferring. I mean, that, 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 that it is what it is. Now, when we won the national championship, I'm one of those guys on my phone. If I got messages, like I got to answer them. Well, unfortunately, like when it taps out, and I think it was like 700 or 800, whatever the number was, you would start answering them, but then you would get new ones in so you could never lower it. So I ended up staying up all night trying to lower it. And then about an hour before bed, because we're in the bubble. So you see your families, you celebrate with everybody. Then you go back to your hotel room and you're trying to get through all your messages. And then you have a, a uh, the Today Show at, at 6 a.m. So you're like, do you sleep for 30 minutes? Do you? S no, you're not gonna sleep for 30 minutes. So you're and then and then you get done. You pack up the hotel, but coming back, uh, <laughs> having uh, uh, the people meet us at the uh, uh, airport, and then coming home, uh, I was not. In a, in a state of mind to think about the next year, I was like, I just need to get to bed because I haven't pulled an all nighter uh, for like 30 years, you know, and <laughs> there's a reason we don't pull them when we're in our fifties. Right. Yeah. Oh, I bet it took you weeks to return all the texts on that. Huh? You know what though? I would love to have that problem again. 
Coach, your your team was so fun to watch that year. That was just an incredible, incredible team. Uh, I'm curious as as the years have gone by, you know, the landscape of college sports has changed a lot and it's changed a lot in the past five years. What, what are your thoughts today about what's going on in college sports with NIL and how, how is, how are you dealing with that? Uh, what warnings do you have for, for parents and kids? Can you just speak to that a little bit? Yeah. Great, 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 great questions. Um, I know the frustration with the coaches is the constant uh, trying to figure out the rules because we just want to know. It's kind of like going into a game. Is it 40 minutes? Is it 45 minutes? Is it what's the shot clock? Like you just want to know so you can plan ahead. Um, At the same time for parents, uh, the great thing is uh, your son or daughter, um, God willing, and they're in that position, they're going to make money not just get a scholarship, but also make money. And hopefully uh, the agent or the financial guy um, allows or or woman allows them to prepare and use that the rest of their life. And it sets them up for uh, a great uh, jumpstart in life, which is, which is awesome. Uh, What, what uh, um, my advice is if their goal is the NBA, then don't put the goal, the most NIL, put it, the best program to get you to the NBA. Um, you got to, whatever your goals are, you got to follow the goals. And um, if it's, if it's an academic school, well, academics, if it's a Christian school, Christian school with, with the priorities with that. Um, and, and from there, um, the one thing that I do feel for athletes is I think uh, um, all of us can relate. Normally you get out of college and your, your, your earnings is like this. You start out low and hopefully throughout your career, you move up. And uh, it's really hard to go from the Ritz Carlton to uh, the Motel 6. It's easier to go from Motel 6 and work your way up. And um, I know college athletes that, don't save now all of a sudden they get used to spending and then now they're they come down that's i wouldn't wish that on anybody so that's that's something that hopefully um their inner circle provides great direction so they don't have to go through that love that uh you know coach i know you're a busy man um and we thank you for spending time my my last question for you is a two-parter What's your advice to all the coaches out there that are trying to coach these kids and get them ready, whether it's for the real world or whether to come play for you? And then what's your advice to the parents like yourself that you gave uh, with with uh, kids at play? Well, I think I think uh, um, uh, first for coaches is why do I coach? And then uh, um, I love this. uh, uh, Would I want to be coached by myself today? If you can answer your why and you can coach like you would want to be coached, um, you're going to you're going to probably be pretty successful. Um, As far as as far as the parents go, uh, I mean, life is life is short. And um, I know with me, um, my number one goal is that that I see my kids in heaven one day and um, I know they can't buy their way in. I know they can't earn their way in. Uh, so, uh, uh, everything that they do, I hope is pointing that way. And, uh, um, they have fun with the God given ability they've been given. Um, but the last thing I would ever want to do is force my kids to do something that God didn't put on their heart or give them, uh, a desire to do or a talent to do or an ability to do. Um, and because we all know that, uh, God's created each person uniquely. And when you find why he's created you, that's when you're special. Man. Coach, man, we, we love that you're using the platform to, to point people towards him. Uh, it's, it's not done enough. It's refreshing. It's very refreshing. So we, we appreciate that. We appreciate it. And you've, you've given us another reason to come to Waco besides Chip and Joanna game, (laughs) (laughs) right? Hey, hey, Chip, Chip and Joe are the best. You come down, you can watch the game. You can go through Magnolia to tour all the things they got some great cupcakes for you you look lean enough you could have a couple well you know what? I, <laughs> i'll send my wife there and i'll come over and hang out with you in the uh, basketball well you guys are always welcome appreciate what you do and thanks for helping so many young kids and uh, families out 
Well, thanks, Coach, and best of luck this year, man. Hope you have another great year. Appreciate you. If you say a prayer for the Bears, we always appreciate that.